Wait, 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 wait. This video isn't what you think it is. I love Terraria. It's literally my favorite game of all time. This video is specifically focused on the old gen console ports. But hey, while you're here, what is your childhood gaming device? Some of you like me answer that question with the Xbox 360, but obviously the Xbox 360 isn't the only console. I know a lot of you guys started with a PlayStation 3, a Nintendo Wii, a 3DS, or maybe even a full computer if you're really rich. Regardless, do you know what all of these consoles, minus the computer, have in common? They all have their own version of Terraria Legacy. And for a lot of you, this could have been the first version of Terraria you've ever played. Even if you haven't played Terraria Legacy, you might still get nostalgic just from thinking about the YouTube videos that were made with the game. YouTubers such as Stampy, Hero, Urimer, and many others made videos on this game. I couldn't find many statistics on exactly how many copies were sold, but I would have to say that the Terraria Legacy editions make up a solid amount of the total sales, and definitely help form Terraria into the game it is today. Terraria Legacy was the game's first full release. At the time Terraria Legacy was made, Terraria PC was only developed up until Gollum. This version of Terraria, unlike PC, wasn't produced by Relogic alone, but actually with the help of multiple teams such as 505 Games and Engine Software which allowed the game to be not just a console port, but also with an endgame, and a lot more. Though, even with all the good that came from these versions of Terraria, when it came time for 1.3, almost if not everything from these versions got scrapped. And I'm gonna discuss why in this video. What exactly happened to Terraria Legacy, and why did these versions of the game fail? But just to clarify before I start, this video is actually gonna discuss two topics. One of the topics being the flaws of Terraria Legacy, and the other one being why the content didn't make it to 1.3. Let's get started. If you look pretty much anywhere in this version of Terraria, you're almost guaranteed to see something different than the PC version. When I say PC version, I don't mean 1.4, I mean 1.2, the version of Terraria that the port was based on. These are console exclusives. Add-ons to the game that were most likely put in to give people a reason to buy the more expensive console versions instead of playing on PC. These are obviously fine because who doesn't like more features in their game, right? Well, here's the problem. Although these features are definitely not seen on other versions of Terraria, they're not exactly unique either. Also, in case you haven't noticed yet, most of these add-ons are either reskins or updated versions of already existing content. For example, look at these two slimes. Which one do you think is the console exclusive? If you could believe it, this shadow slime is actually a console exclusive. And the only difference between the two besides buffs is that it can drop a petri dish, which allows you to summon a slime pet, or in other words, a reskin of the blue slime. It's definitely a cool feature, but why couldn't the regular Corrupt Slime just drop it? Oh, so this is why I should pay $20 for the Xbox 360 edition. That makes total sense. My best guess for why they did this instead of making fully unique features is just so that they didn't change the game too much, but it also could have been to save money. So while these add-ons are definitely kinda cool, they don't really add anything except a little more variety to the game. A great example of enemies that are almost entirely useless outside of looking different are the spectral enemies. Honestly, these enemies aren't a major part of this version, but I think they're a really good example of why Terraria Legacy failed. All three examples of these enemies are just reskins of the enemy they're based on, and of course, they have no special drops. One that I'd like to point out as the stupidest of the bunch is the spectral elemental. This enemy is obviously based on the Chaos Elemental, but it manages to actually be worse than the original. Although this enemy looks cool, it literally can't drop the Rod of Discord. It's simple, really. <laughs> I'm just better than you. So let's say for every one Chaos Elemental, one Spectral Elemental spawns. That means that the drop rate gets cut in half. How could anyone think this is a good idea? And real quick, just for one last example, let's look at the only pre-hard mode exclusive weapon in Terraria Legacy, the Sharanga. This, just like the exclusive enemies, is another great example of why Terraria Legacy content just sucked. To craft this, you need two Molten Furies and ten Hellstone Bars, but for some reason it shoots Spectral Arrows, which I actually wouldn't hate, but it's the only weapon in the game that shoots them. You can't even craft these arrows, you can only get them from Akram at the end of the game. 
just why? And the funny thing is that the spectral arrows, the only somewhat unique part of this weapon, are just reskinned cursed arrows. Imagine how cool it would be if when you killed the spectral enemies, they had a chance to drop spectral flame that you could craft into arrows and other weapons. This would basically solve my spectral problems and make the Troya Legacy exclusives feel more fleshed out. So while these console exclusives can't be found in other versions of Terraria at the time, I don't feel they add nearly enough to the game alone to make it worth the extra $20. I know I'm not alone on this as well. Other YouTubers have pointed this out while covering these versions of the game. So while all these exclusives are definitely disappointing, I don't think they were the only reason why Terraria Legacy failed. And now, it's time to go over one of the worst bosses in Terraria history. I figured since Akram is basically the face of Terraria Legacy, he deserves his own category. Like I said earlier, when console Terraria was being developed, PC Terraria didn't yet have a final boss, unless you consider Gollum a final boss. Obviously, if the developers behind Terraria Legacy wanted to release a full game, they would need to add one. A big, epic boss fight with features never before seen, with lots of build-up and a clear implication to the lore. Akram's a reskin, I have Cthulhu, let's be honest. To give the developers credit, I actually really like this boss. Sadly for the developers, I am in a minority, but even I have to say he does not work as a final boss. Compared to something like the Moon Lord in 1.3, Akram is just disappointing. If you're watching this video, you most likely already know everything there is to know about Akram, so I'm just going to give him a quick overview. Skip to this time if you don't need one. Like we already established, Akram is a goofy looking flying boss that you can only spawn with a suspicious looking skull at night with two phases. In his first phase, he spawns servants of Akram, shoots red lasers, and charges at you, all doing insignificant damage. If you have the right equipment, it's almost impossible to die to the first phase. The second phase is the complete opposite. Akram goes from doing almost no damage to each attack doing over 100 damage. In his second phase, he shoots purple lasers and they're targeted this time. He also shoots demon scythes that are way too fast for their own good. He still spawns servants, but they still do very little damage, they're more of an annoyance than anything and he also charges a lot faster. Sound familiar? So while this boss is pretty comparable to pretty much any other boss in Terraria, there is one thing that separates him from the bunch, his endgame drops. But trust me, these are just as bad as the boss himself. For starters, let's talk about the armor sets, the Dragon, Spectral, and Titan armors. Now on the surface, these are actually pretty cool. To craft these armor sets, you have to combine every tier of hard mode armor besides Chlorophyte along with 20 to 30 souls of Might, Fright, or Sight, depending on which class you're going for, and also 50 souls of Blight, dropped by Akram. To my knowledge, these are the best armor sets you can get in Terraria Legacy. They even have their own weapons to go along with them. So what's the problem with these? For starters, the first two tiers of hard mode armor that you need to be able to craft any set aren't interchangeable. So that means if you get a world with Palladium and or Orichalcum, you have to create a new world, or maybe even multiple, until you can get Cobalt and or Mithril for the armor set. And if you're really dedicated to only using one world, the only other way you can get these ores is by fishing. FISHING! When you look at these armor sets, you might think, hey, at least they look cool. And I have to agree with you on that. At least they decided to change these to custom models. You heard me. I said change. When these armor sets were introduced, Every single one of them was a reskin, including the weapons. Some of these reskins go as far back to pre-hard mode armor sets. How can a team be this lazy? Akram is a prime example of why the Terraria Legacy features just got removed in 1.3. There's simply nothing special about him or his drops. In my opinion, if the Terraria developers decided to keep him in the game when they made 1.3, if they made his attacks more unique and balanced him a little, he would fit perfectly where the Empress of Light is in progression. But obviously, that didn't happen, and I simply think that the underwhelming boss fight could have contributed to the fall of Terraria Legacy. Obviously, any port of a game is gonna come with its fair share of bugs, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't played enough Terraria Legacy recently to give a full list on every single bug that exists in the current version of the game. Yeah, sorry. But while I can't do that, let me go over a bug that, while it didn't affect everyone, definitely contributed to the downfall of this game. The bug I want to cover is what I call the corruption bug. 
This is, in my opinion, the biggest bug that Terraria Legacy, or Terraria itself, has ever experienced, and is the main reason I stopped playing on console. The only evidence of this bug I could find is a couple forum posts, but basically if you turned off your console right as the world was saving, it would get completely corrupted. That's it. Keep in mind that I can't prove this is the reason, it just makes the most sense. The biggest problem with this is that most of the time you're playing on your main worlds, so those have a much higher chance of this happening than the ones that you don't care about. Nowadays, Terraria solves this by automatically storing a world backup, but older versions didn't have this feature. So imagine waking up one day, going to play a world that you spent countless hours on, and finding out that it's been entirely corrupted. I feel for most people they experience this, they didn't just say, hey, that's okay, I'll just make another world and spend another 100 hours to get back to where I was. No, most people just quit. Now, although I couldn't find any evidence to back this up, I've heard theories that the reason behind the legacy content being removed was a legal thing. Let me explain. Since there were two other teams working on Terraria Legacy, Relogic doesn't own 100% of the rights to Terraria Legacy. This includes the exclusive content, meaning that without the permission from Engine Software, Relogic can't just add the content to other versions of the game. They would also need permission from 505 Games, but since 505 Games literally helped them with the new gen console port and the mobile port, I don't think it would be that hard to get. And considering that Relogic worked with other teams for the new gen console ports and the 1.3 mobile port, I could see why Engine Software wouldn't want to give up the rights to the content. Keep in mind this has no evidence to back it up, but maybe they wanted Relogic to purchase the rights from them and Relogic just said, nah, I'm good. Either way, it still makes for an interesting theory and it's possible that this could have been one of the reasons why the legacy content didn't survive the trip to 1.3. One of the things that Terraria is almost always acclaimed for in reviews is the price. If you play on PC, you only have to pay $10 for the game which is an absolute steal since you can easily get over a thousand hours in the game. Sadly, Terraria Legacy didn't have this luxury, which makes sense, because now you have two other game studios to pay for development, so logically you kinda have to price it higher than the PC version. And even though yes, I do think the developers tried to make the game worth the extra money, kinda, considering all versions of this game didn't even have crossplay along with everything else, Odds are, some people might have just looked at it and decided it simply wasn't worth it for a few extra features. For the last reason, I'd like to talk about the Collector's Edition. Now, while I don't exactly believe that this contributed at all to the downfall of Terraria Legacy, I think it follows the same theme that the game had. Disappointing. The Collector's Edition for Terraria Legacy is $20 more than the base game, so what will you get for an extra $20? You get a custom box, a 2GB USB stick, it also comes with 3 stickers, and a poster. You already know that if the box is one of the features of a collector's edition, it's not gonna be great. I mean, just look at the graphic on the front. Literally the only difference between the normal box art and the collector's edition art is this little itsy bitsy text right here. I mean, look at the PC collector's edition. Sure it isn't the prettiest box art, but at least it's unique. And while I do think this is cool for Terraria fans that want to support the developers, compared to the PC Collector's Edition that only went for $25, this just wasn't worth it. So yeah, now you know 6 reasons why Terraria Legacy didn't live on past 1.3. This video took me almost 2 months to make, so if you enjoyed it, it would mean a lot to me if you hit the like button. I won't ask you to subscribe, but if you do enjoy this type of content, I would certainly recommend it because I will be uploading more like this in the future. Also, congrats to the giveaway winner, OK Man, from the last video. Keep an eye out for more in the future. Anyways, later.